the first time I went on the street, I was chubbily dressed up by my pimps. I was kind of naked. I couldn't stand it. I ran and hid myself at the back of the trash bins because I was so ashamed. I was so depressed, very sad, but there was nothing I could do. I still go back there every day. And gradually, by so doing, I lost my dignity as a woman. I lost my pride. The woman in me went out and I became white. Globally, men, women and children are deceived or coerced by human traffickers for the purpose of exploitation in all its traditional and ever-changing forms. No country and few communities are immune to this multidimensional phenomenon. In recent decades, human trafficking has become one of the major concerns of the international community and one of the most profitable crimes worldwide. Human trafficking is a monster with many heads, run by both organized crime syndicates and independent opportunists. It impacts on individuals and societies in all regions of the world. There are many indications that most people who are trafficked are never identified as trafficking victims or provided with any form of assistance. At its core, human trafficking is a process that results in the exploitation of people. The forms of exploitation are diverse and ever-evolving. Our failure to recognize the exploitation that occurs around us is reflected by the small numbers of identified trafficking victims. The year 2000 saw a significant milestone in international efforts to stop human trafficking. National governments began to sign the United Nations Protocol to prevent, suppress and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children, supplementing the United Nations Transnational Organized Crime Convention. The United Nations Protocol provided the first internationally agreed definition of trafficking in persons, requiring countries to criminalize and collectively act against human trafficking. Trafficking in persons is defined through a combination of three constituent elements. The first element, the act, what is done by the offender. Recruiting, transporting, transfer, harboring or receipt of a person. The second element, the means, refers to how the trafficker does the act. There are many means, a few of which are the use of force, deception, abuse of a position of vulnerability or coercion. The third element is the purpose, which is exportation. This refers to why the offender does this. It's for the offender's financial benefit. Human trafficking takes advantage of conflicts, humanitarian disasters, and the vulnerability of people in situations of individual or community crisis. Traffickers scout for potential victims, targeting men, women and children in countries where there is war, civil unrest, persecution of minority or racial religious groups, natural disaster, economic collapse, corruption and poverty, or a lack of opportunities or hope. Social upheavals and the fragmentation and corruption of traditional cultures destroy group identity, family stability and values. Vulnerable groups and families can become directly or indirectly involved with human trafficking. Joy was first trafficked within her own country, aged 10, for domestic servitude and later sold by her boyfriend to be trafficked to Europe for prostitution. 
my came for me very poor home. Um, my friends are very poor. They don't have any money. Sometimes my father beats my mother because of no money, no food in the house, no money to take the children to school, nothing. Children are trafficked globally into any area where profits can be made, ruthlessly exploited into a wide range of work, denying them an education, robbing them of their dignity, and exposing them to dangerous work, damaging their physical and mental health. Traffickers prey on people's dreams of a better life elsewhere. Natasha lived with her grandparents, and as the oldest sister in a flock of young children, she was the main breadwinner with responsibility for the whole family. Her friend introduced her to a trafficker who regularly visited their village and promised her work abroad. Recrutorul nu întotdeauna este și traficantul, adică recrutorul este persoana care face oferta sau face propunerea de a pleca uh, peste hotare. În calitate de recrutor poate fi uh, orice persoană, indiferent de gen, uh, pot, pot fi și femei și bărbați, uneori chiar uh, familii, uh, sunt în rolul de recrutor. Uh, la fel, Poate fi o persoană cunoscută, fie că e vorba de o persoană din comunitate, fie că este vorba de o persoană chiar de un grad de rudeni. Am avut cazuri când în calitate de recrutor au fost chiar proprii părinți în cazul traficului de minori. Unlike drugs and weapons, human beings can be sold or retrafficked countless times, making investment in one individual exceedingly profitable. Vladimir was approached by traffickers posing as legal agents, able to procure genuine documents and promising him agricultural work abroad. Trafficking may involve the exploitation of persons who sell their organs to criminals. Da, după ce am venit acasă, vroiam să lucrez ceva și nu puteam. Și deși mă gândeam, ea că te să lucrează, dar eu nu pot lucra. Dar că nu știam cum a, deodată că m-am dus cu masii, dar pe urmă de-am învățat și în părerea ta de-am, nu puteai întoarce nimic înapoi. Men, women and children may move from one place to another, both willingly and legally. They may also cross borders illegally. During transportation, victims are often subjected to the most appalling conditions. Every conceivable form of transport can and is used exposing both smuggled migrants and trafficked persons to considerable dangers and indignities. People risk dying from exposure, thirst, starvation, shock, drowning, suffocation in transport containers, and being murdered. Migrants, stranded, robbed and abused, are vulnerable to predatory traffickers who recruit at every stage throughout the often long migratory movement. Smugglers may also directly collaborate with traffickers. Physical abuse is not the only form of control method used by traffickers. After long periods of harsh treatment, 
some victims can become almost immune to direct physical violence. Therefore, many different forms of psychological pressure are used by traffickers, who, for example, threaten the victim's family at their home. Each trafficking case is colored by unique cultural, psychological, and social factors, and therefore should be analyzed and evaluated individually. Many victims of trafficking have experienced multiple traumas and may present a bewildering array of both psychological and physical symptoms. These may include apathy, memory loss, extreme and sudden mood changes, hostility, shame, self-destructive behavior, and an array of psychosomatic disturbances like headache, fatigue, dizzy spells, general pain, nausea, and insomnia. A woman will come in and say, you know, I was uh, tricked to come over here. Um, I thought I was going to be getting this well-paid job as a, as a waitress. Um, I got paid, um, I didn't get paid, but I was going to get paid when I was here, send money back for my family, really improved their life. When I got here, I got gang raped by the people that took me over. I got by, raped by the people I was sold to. I then get made to have sex with 20 people a day. And then the officer says, oh, I see you've got a false passport there. And focuses on the passport. It's incredible. How can you do that? But it's happening in all countries around the world. And the traffickers are laughing at us because we're just playing into their hands. We've got to focus on the traffickers. To do that, we've got to look after the victims. To do that is just simple, basic human rights. What you'd expect of people in your family, how you'd expect them to be treated, that's all you need to do.